Right guys, next part we're going to look at to get you started is your nutrition. Now, some of you are working with me on a nutrition basis, so they said we're talking about your calories and talking about actually getting what your macronutrients need to be. Some of you are just doing programming and you just need a little bit of a guide about what we're going to be talking about. So we're here, what we're going to go through here is the Eric Helms uh, Nutrition Pyramid. Now, this is quite a long-winded thing in the respect of it's very layered. Nutrition is layered. People will tell you that it's just calories in, calories out. Now, in my opinion, this is bullshit. That is only one part of nutrition, okay? That is not the be-all and end-all about nutrition. What people are starting to forget about is actually being nourished. Nourished to do with being healthy. Being healthy means we're more productive and have the ability to utilize energy better. That's gonna get you the gains that you want, not that you are being in a calorie deficit for six months is gonna get you in the best shape of your life. Just to clarify what a lot of you will see on Instagram and on YouTube and that kind of thing are people that are extremely shredded selling you plans that's literally just about being in a calorie deficit. It is not just about that. Being in a calorie deficit is king to losing weight, but being in a nutrient deficit is also king for fucking up your metabolism. Excuse my French. Uh, so what I want you guys to start realizing, there's two sides to, to um, nutrition that we're gonna look at as a group, is we're gonna look at health, and then we're gonna look at performance-based sport nutrition. If you don't have your health nutrition on point, your calories in, calories out, if it fits your macros kind of diet, will not work, okay? So this is where we need to start getting. The bottom of the pyramid is illustrated called lifestyle and behavior. Lifestyle and behavior is in the respect of what you're doing right now and the behaviors that you're exhibiting for the goals that you're asking for. So. Are you a couch potato sat at home doing nothing and asking for a six pack? Or are you training 16 times a week, eating 1100 calories? Those are two lifestyle and behavior um, analogies that I see very, very often that both will not meet your context and contextualize your goals that you're asking for. What we're looking for in lifestyle behavior is finding balance. Okay, so if in your body, homeostasis means finding balance. Homeostasis can be anything to do with how much fluid you have in your body, to how much, how stressed you are and how you're responding to it, etc. But homeostasis just means balance. We're trying to find that in your lifestyle and your behavior. What we're looking forward to find first is we're gonna find how we're gonna make your life better from the habits that you're exhibiting. Are you only eating three times a day? Can we make it four? Are we only having half a liter of water a day? Can we make that two? It's what we're gonna do for you is assess where you are and give you goals to hit as soon as possible because everything that you're doing with me now, you need to step up and raise the standard to the next level. I'm not asking you to go all the way to the top and be crazy and be doing meal prep and eating chicken and broccoli eight times a day, blah, blah, blah. What I'm asking you to do is to take responsibility for your behavior currently and raise the standard of it. Are you one of those midnight snackers that's going in and eating chocolate before you go to bed when you haven't had any fruit in bed your day? Are you that person who's refusing to eat another meal because you're frightened of getting fat but haven't got an understanding about why you're having carbohydrates and protein, for example? We need to work on that as a team. So the first part of the pyramid is your lifestyle and behavior. Next bit is energy balance. Calories in, calories out. Now, like I said to you before, the health and, uh, health and sport aspect of this does come into play. Energy, energy out is king for weight loss. It's also king for weight gain. But for health, what we're looking at is making sure that you've actually got nutritional habits that you, that you can use without having to track food to start with. So I'm a big food tracking believer. I believe that you should, have the, you should be empowered by learning about what's in your food, how much food you should have per day. And we talk about having a caloric ceiling. A caloric ceiling means that the amount of calories that I have that is gonna that I can hit every day that's not gonna let me loot, may increase my body weight. Okay, so for example, someone at my size at nearly 100 kilos, I'm 91 at the moment, but let's say it's 100, and I, I'm eating 2,700 uh, calories per day, but I'm training six days a week. Okay, I do not put on weight with 2,700 calories. I go to three, two, three, five. I need to double up my training not to lose weight or to to to, to maintain my weight. Sorry. But if I do that, then I'll start to increase body mass and then it'll be dependent whether I'm trying to increase muscle mass or whether it's adipose tissue, whether it's fat. Vice versa, if I'm not eating enough of those calories, what I'm doing is I'm slowing my metabolism down so that it gives me the inability to be able to absorb more food. More food we can use, the more fuel that we have, the harder we can train, the more adaptation we can see. You need to get out of this mindset that nutrition's about starving. 
eat the, with me, it's the exact opposite. We eat as much food as physically possible to see the adaptation that we want to see, and that's going to get us there. It's way more fun eating 2,500 calories and losing weight than eating 500 calories and losing weight. It's a lot more sustainable, and it's a lot more long-term. The name of the game is long-term. Your eight-week six-pack, that comes when you've actually meet all these points of this pyramid. That doesn't come straight away. A lot of you haven't got the, the, the the, the amount of muscle mass needed to see for the amount of weight drop to have, okay? So an example would be, I, I get females asking me who are 50 kilos, but they're 35% body fat. You're not gonna see the abs that you want. You need to start building muscle to then peel off that body fat to be able to see it. That's called muscle tone, yeah? Vice versa, from a performance perspective, what a lot of you do are under-regulating your performance, trying to lose body fat. And what you're doing is you're doing too, your training is too stressful for you then to be able to lose body fat. You're burning glycogen, rather than burning body fat. Burning glycogen, which, which then you haven't got enough carbohydrate for, you're then actually burning muscle tissue because that's what your body does. It actually converts protein into carbohydrates to be used, okay? So like I said about it, hey, having energy balance. So for health, to find energy balance this is very, very simple, okay? So you are gonna have to, to learn how to track. I'll show you that. I'll send you a video along with this, how to use my fitness pal, and then we'll move on from there. So we have two grams of protein per kilo of body weight we're gonna be looking at, okay? So we're at meat sources, whether that's dairy sources, you can use it from, from veg as well, and nuts, but there's not actually that much protein and the amino acid profile in there. You're then gonna look at having between seven and a 12 fruit and veg a day. That sounds a lot, but if you think about that, I've got all these vitamins and minerals that my body needs to use to make energy, and you're only having three pieces of lettuce a day and a tomato, you're missing the whole bigger picture of all of this, okay? So what I want you guys to do is, is every meal that you have, whether it's four, whether it's five, whether it's six meals a day, you either have a piece of fruit or two veg. Every single meal, that's breakfast included, okay? If very easy on breakfast, have eggs and spinach. Easy omelet, no problem. It's also easy for you to have a handful of, of uh, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, or even have a protein shake that has all three of them in it with some protein. You can do this, but if you live to these laws for your health, this performance-based, aesthetic-based nutrition will then come. We are then going to look at having um, macronutrition. Macronutrition comes to talk to you about your proteins, carbs, and fats. A non-negotiable for somebody who's trying to increase and improve muscle mass and also trying to maintain muscle mass whilst cutting is to, between 1.8 and 2.2 grams of protein per kilo of body weight. That means you need to weigh that's digested protein. 100 grams of chicken equates to just under... 30 grams of digested protein. So you need to have, for me, 100 kilos, I need 220 grams of digested protein. That's nearly a kilo of meat of, of animal products. That's why we, so I use supplementation because it can be a lot easier so I can use dairy, for example, with a whey protein shake. We're then gonna use uh, your carbs and fats then meet the rest of that macro split. So if you're just on a normal diet with me, we do minimum one gram of fat per kilo and the rest of it's filled through carbohydrate, which does include your fruit and your veg. It's not just rice or bread or, or potatoes, it's everything you have there. Your split can then be as open as it wants to be when you're focused on calories. If you're on a fat loss journey and you are actually, you are excessively obese, then we will start to pull carbohydrate right out and I'll explain how you do that later on in a different, in, in a personalized video on how you're gonna do that. We're then gonna look at um, micronutrition. Micronutrition relates to the vitamins and minerals that you are, you're taking. So like I said to you before about having a varied fruit and veg base every single day, you're then gonna start covering bases with what your, your uh, nutrition is gonna allow. So like I said, you, you've got fat soluble vitamins, you've got normal water soluble vitamins, you've got minerals you need to get. We all of these equate to different processes in the body, whether it's a help for energy production, whether it's for recovery, whether it's for cellular health, there's so many or enzymatics, there's your enzymes in your stomach. We've got loads and loads and loads of reasons to have vitamins and minerals. And if you're not getting them in your diet, that is a huge problem. That's why I have, I'm a big stressor on calories in, calories out is important only when you have the health aspect of, of nutrition down. As well as that, you're actually gonna see some change. Uh, next one we're gonna look at is supplements. Supplements for me are like, um, adding a special type of fuel to a Ferrari, okay? There's no need for you to do supplements unless you're asking for sport nutrition or you have a specific reason. You can get everything from a diet from a health perspective. From a performance perspective, what we're asking for here is that you do have that ability to use it, i.e. 
if I'm putting you on creatine, if I'm putting you on a multivitamin, an omega-3, a CoQ10 enzyme, for example, all of this is geared because of your training. This is not geared for health. We're giving you a multivitamin, for example, because it's going to cover bases. We're not using that to supplement food. I'm giving you creatine because you can't get that much creatine in your diet that you need. So like I've said to you before, a supplementation is literally the tip of the iceberg when it comes down to it. It's not important in, unless you've got all those other steps done. And then what we're looking at there is timing. Timing of your nutrition is, is, is important in some respects, but it's not important in others. In the global aspect of it, it is not important. In the global aspect, it's, it's not important because your body regulates energy in different ways throughout the day. But for example, if we're looking at it in a micro dose, so daily dose, we're gonna be looking at having, so post-workout, for example, if you're having carbohydrates and protein, there's a 33% increase in protein synthesis because you're having carbohydrates and protein. Vice versa, if you haven't done anything and you're smashing high glycemic carbohydrate for no reason, you're going over that threshold, you're then gonna start having adipose tissue. So this is what I mean about timing, is timing is a very small part of things but it can be used in the right manner if you use it properly. That's what our conversation needs to be about your nutrition. Uh, one thing is off the pyramid is hydration. Hydration is something that I hugely miss on most 99% of people. You're looking at one litre per 25 kilos of body weight before you train. Every time that you train, it's another litre of water. So for me, I'm at 100 kilos. I should be having four litres of water a day, plus what else I'm doing. I hope that was helpful. In the next video, we'll, we'll, we'll go, go through the next part of the, the, the online pyramid that we're gonna be using. Uh, if you have any questions, please give me a call or give me a text and I'll fire you the next video over. Take care and stay strong.